What is up? Here we go with another video. Today I'm going to be talking about like 10 things that I wish I knew about Python before I started this. So there's a neat codes video for this and he didn't really like go over, he didn't touch any, nothing crazy actually. I mean, you know, he talked 26 minutes, but this is not enough time for all of Python really. And he's misses like some pretty critical things. Apparently he didn't go over default dick though. Methods, decorators, generators, argument parsing, type hinting, like yeah, design stuff is cool, right? Like, oh yeah, you can use design patterns, but like, what about just stuff that just is just better? All right, so yeah, um, first thing I'm gonna go over is how to use a counter. So, all right, like, and if anybody who doesn't know who I am, I am, uh, my name's Raymond Jones. I have been solving lead code problems for a fat minute, man, a long time. I... I've also failed a lot of interviews because I didn't know Python with, okay, so let's start with like the Lyft interview, right? So I had a Lyft interview in I think 2019 or maybe 2018 for an internship. And I was like, I don't remember the exact question, but I was asked something on how to, I need to sort multiple values of things, something. And I didn't know how to do that actually. So like, let's say I had like some object, right? And so I was given like some card object. So yeah, so let's say like in this interview, right? Like I was given, you know, some list of, of cards and I want to sort these. Uh, and when I did the Lyft interview, I actually had no idea how to do that. This was in 2018, I believe. But so the way to do that now that I know is that instead of having it here, what we can do is we can go do sorted cards or cards equals right sorted. And then we pass in the cards and then we just do key equals Lambda X. And we can sort this based off any attributes. Typically if I'm doing like a you know, in most coding interviews, it's probably not going to be objects. It'll probably be like some type of values in an array that we want to sort up by. But and we have this, we have the option of doing uh, really any, you know, kind of comparator, right? So if let's say like for the card, we want the card uh, like rank, we want to sort by that. Well, now we can sort by that. And if we want to sort by suits, then we can just type in suit here and it'll work for suits. In this case, let's say we want rank. We'll sort that there. We're gonna get them in sorted order like that. So this is a really useful technique and it's pretty straightforward once you get the hang of it, it's just the syntax that you need, but it's an incredibly important tool for a lot of problems actually, for a lot of like algorithm type problems. Second thing that's relevant is that you can also sort by, like what if you wanna sort by the suit and then sort by the rank. So then how would you do that? To do that, you can create a tuple and then you can define like the first one, the first value and the second value, and it'll do that. So x.suit and then x.rank. Yep, you are making a copy with sorted. You are making a copy with sorted. All right, so let's say we have a list that is sorted and what we want to do is find the value that's inside of it. Now, you guys should know binary search already. If you don't know it, then you know you should watch a video on it. But uh, there's actually a really fast way to do this in Python, right? So the typical way is that you write out some command um, that looks like, you know, like, like a template. So you have like, oh, left, you know, right, uh, left is defined, right is defined. And then you do the while loop and then you type out this thing and this thing. Um, you do, you set your mid plus or your left equals mid plus one and all that. The faster way of doing this. Um, yeah. So what you can do is you can write out this code bisect dot bisect left nums and search for the value, the one you want to find, which is two, let's say we want to find, and it's going to give you an index and you can take that index and then you can iterate on the array and you're going to find it. Now that said bisect is a little bit tricky because it works off of bisect left. Uh, it works off the insertion point, so it doesn't actually get you the value. It'll find you the the leftmost insertion point of where it should be, right? Because there's a two here, um, that left side is going to be like at zero, one, two, um, because this two is currently here. So we will put in another two, like right here. Um, this is important because this can run you in, this can, you can run into different or unexpected cases when 
you want to search for something. So I guess if we were searching for five, it would find the leftmost insertion point of five. So all the way to the four, and then that insertion index is going to be, I believe, out of bounds, right? If I'm if if what I'm saying is true. So if you're looking for five and it's out of bounds, oh my god, I never saved. So if you're looking for five, right, five is is going to be the leftmost insertion point of five is going to be onto the left of this or to the right of this four, right? It's going to be here and then somewhere over here. And so because of that, we can actually get this error. So there are cases where you'd have to like check the index bounds if you think that's going to happen. Um, if you know the number is does exist, then you can just print out, you can just type out what the number is. But a lot of times in binary search, we're not binary searching because we know the number exists. We want to find the closest value to that number. Um, and in, in this case, you know, binary bisect left works. Um, you also have the option of a bisect right, which I believe is just it typed to the right. Normally I just do, you know, it's just bisect either or. And um again that'll find you the rightmost point so in the same case where we were all with like binary search like my general approach is that i can run this command i can find the insertion point of like some number and that can dictate so it'll generally involve me spending maybe about a minute just seeing like eyeballing it to see what i can find but it works very well for a, a wide variety of problems where you need to like you know, um, you have some sorted range and you need to like, well, let's say that you want to like just generate permutations, combinations, combinations with replacement. There are a lot of problems where you need to do these type of things uh, for whatever reason, algorithms, like this is just a really cool topic that gets asked. So uh, Python has a really cool way. Instead of you writing your own recursive function every single time, you can just in one line and get all the permutations, combinations and combinations with replacement. Right. And then there's also like a really handy guide if you never forget what these mean. But if we go here, it'll be clear and then run this again. Right. You're going to see zero, one, zero, two, one, zero. Right. So like the, the actual position of these things doesn't, doesn't matter in the permutations case, the combinations case. Yeah. Zero has to be followed by one, like zero has to be followed by two, right? The one that's before always has to be like there in the, in the array, like zero, one, two goes there and then here with replacement you're allowed to use you're allowed to double dip so to speak where you can do one one two two this is a very useful tool in python because there are a lot of problems that have this kind of thing not all problems of course but it's enough to where you can you'll notice it for sure and you'll think why why do i have to spend again five minutes doing that when you could just call that and if you ever have any like help you can if you need help you can go to the iter tools HTML guide, and this is going to show you um, a nice little sample, right? So here you got your nice little sample. There's even product, A, 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 B, A, B, A, C, A, D, B, A, B, A, right? All these parts and then replacements and all that. So that's that one, very quick one. So next we'll go into, okay, cool. So yeah, this is something that I'll use if I need to rotate something by 90, 90 degrees and um, so I'll transpose it and then I'll just reverse all of like the, all these rows values essentially by you know doing like the normal Python syntax for reversing a list. And if we look here, we're gonna see that, okay, we get 12, 36, 65, 67, right? 12, 36, 65, 67, right? And you can use this syntax of just list, zip, deconstructor and sorted matrix. Now that's it. You can do a lot of other things, tricks with like, I think the deconstructor that I don't know, but, um, in this case, you know, I just have this, or I just know that like, this is pretty simple line of code that you can use. And yeah, this, I mean, helps me solve a couple of problems. It's not huge, but it's worth knowing, um, because there are matrix and 2d arrays are probably, you know, probably some of the most important and probably transposing. I'm sure there's a lot of mathematical applications of that. Okay, cool. So a second part here is, okay, how do we do, how do we use accumulate? So this is another pattern that is really useful for Python for generating prefix sums. Again, 
you can this is saves this saves me a lot of time if I need to generate a prefix sum and I can actually kind of just hit this scenario it doesn't again work for everything not all prefix sum problems but it's useful to know in the cases that like they do because you just type a little one liner out and you can actually solve problems very very fast so for this one right we'll give it's like some list of numbers uh, we want to generate prefix sum right the standard idea is that you have like some prefix sum array and then you loop through it with like four i in range um like your length of numbers right but we don't want to do that um and then you do like i minus one with i and you just increment them every time uh in this case we just can call accumulate from iter tools so we'll do iter tools dot accumulate and then the numbers and then now here we go so one two three four five we get one three six ten fifteen so that is how to do, do that one okay cool so let's say that we we given some like number like we're given some question and this could be like ransom note leak code problem ransom note i believe has it i believe there are others this is a you know probably one of the the most happening ones um and like typically people who don't use python what they'll do is they'll just iterate through everything and then they'll make a dictionary and then they'll increment every key in that dictionary so like you know they'll have like their frequency or whatever and then they'll just like plus equals one um if some certain case happens or whatever uh, for that number but what you can actually do in python again just have a counter as a counter library um, this is why everything is a lot easier because now you know instead of four lines of code it now becomes one and then you stack 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 that on several different occasions and things are just a lot faster here we go so when i run it again what I, or when i run it i'm going to get original numbers 110 2 right some list of numbers but now we get 9 5 1 4 everything is counted and we have the frequencies of them just in one line of code so this is a really useful um, thing to keep in mind is that you can just wrap wrap the list with a counter and it will count all the occurrences of that. There is even a further extension of this where maybe you want the counts of all the values, right, that occurred. And then you can, because it's a counter object, you can actually play around with this and do like counts.values and that'll give you every single value. And then you can do a counter on those because this is just a list of numbers. And you can count those numbers, you can do most frequent also so you can say number counts dot most frequent and now you know what the most frequent is in like a list of counters right this is um these are benefits that you get from instead of using like the reg the regular like dictionary type of uh, data structure i think it's actually most common actually i might have messed that up i think it's most common okay second part is the default dictionary so this kind of combining like a graph idea here too, but like, let's say we given like some graph problem and we want to add values into them. Well, we can actually use, we can actually use default dictionary and initialize it with a list. And then every time we instantiate like a new key, it's just going to automatically build this list for us. So instead of doing like, again, the typical Python way that, you know, or the non Python or way that somebody would do is that they would say like, oh, well graph at uh, if like if uh, graph dot get source and then they would like you know type in something like none and then like is none so instead of doing like this thing here where we like oh well let's just do if graph source is like and then we have like the none if it's none then we have to initialize it right we don't need that code anymore and we can just use just let the default dict initialize it for us so we tell it to initialize it and then if the key doesn't exist it will initialize it and again, this code is just faster, it's better, and it saves a lot of time for interviews, for doing anything like that. So um, that's another one. Finally, we're gonna go over sorted containers. So there are a lot of problems in Python where you don't have, like Python doesn't have access to like a binary search tree, but we'd still want to have like these O login operations, right? Like how great is it to be able to be able to solve problems and log in time where you can maintain sort of order and you get lookups look up for a value adding a value removing a value um, and sorted list is the closest thing that python has to that 
um, very close to, you know, to that binary search tree and those operations. But what it's doing is implementing this as a, um, I believe several link lists. I think they're actually skip lists, I believe. I don't actually remember. I think they're skip lists where you just have like, they have like several connected like link lists uh, that point to different directions. But what you do is you can have some list of numbers, turn it into a sorted list, turn it into a sorted list, and then um, find values. You can bisect left if you want. You don't even need to. You could just retrieve it and it'll automatically, I believe, get the value for you. Um, you can pop values and all of it is log in. So this is a very useful, very useful one. It, you can, you know, sometimes I'll end up using this as a heap for some problems, even though I should be using a heap. But for the algorithm problems where, yeah, you just need like a, you need O of login for like some sorted order, adding sort numbers and the patterns. Yeah, this one is very good. And yeah, you just can't solve some problems without it, I think. So anyways, that's it for how to use Python for the interviews. I think essentially covered a lot.